Hi, my name is Kirsten Whitaker. Hi, I'm Emily Sunson. I'm from Sacramento area. I'm studying elementary education at BYU. And I just did the New Zealand experience. I went on the New Zealand program. When I first heard about New Zealand, a chance to actually get out of the United States, experience a new culture, um, that was probably what initially kind of got me interested. They still speak English, so you're not in culture shock. New Zealand has the highest literacy rate in the world, and I didn't know that. And most of the, the techniques for literacy that we use here were actually adapted first in New Zealand. Like the fact that I can go do this in place of a semester, like after I've been working really hard through fall, so those are winter semester. Um, it just sounded really exciting and I've always wanted to see like other cultures. First of all, you have to be really committed because <laughs> the deadline is March the year before you would go. And you have to get two teachers letters of recommendation and fill out an application. And then you have to inter interview with one of the faculty that is going to New Zealand with you to see if you're a right fit for it. I remember I like was looking at all the girls from the year before's blogs and going over everything um, and emailing them questions about what to pack, googling how adapters work. Once we found out that we went into the program, then they just they sat us down and said, "Don't worry, don't worry, we'll get everything done." We had a New Zealand class that was the semester just before, and in there we talked about a lot of the differences in the culture. They're a lot more disciplinary. So it was weird to see the teachers, the way that they'd react to the children was a lot different than Utah. Around Utah Valley, you have a lot of um, one culture in the classroom. And so it was really interesting. My school had 26 different languages spoken at it. And a lot of the kids didn't speak English at home. And it was really interesting to work with and see how that affected their reading and their literacy. Um, a lot of them don't get the love at home. And so they'll come in and to have you give them a hug is like amazing to them. We lived with host families in New Zealand, which was awesome. Most of the families were LDS families, and so it felt like, it kind of felt more like home away from home. I had an interesting class. Mine was, it was year three, four, and fives, which is technically second, third, and fourth grade. They were all together, and it was the first year that they'd done these linear groupings in my school. It was just me and the teacher. There were four of the girls in the program were at my primary school, and so it gave me a lot more hands-on time and a lot more time to focus on my own teaching and working one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. And then the teacher was great. She was super helpful. I think when I took the classes the first month where the teachers came in and taught you different resources and things, I thought that that helped me get a different view than the standard view of teaching that you get here in the U.S. Being there with a teacher from New Zealand, kind of teaching you different ways of teaching, I felt like it gave me that advantage of something that I wouldn't have been able to see anywhere else. So I was able to take my own knowledge, add it with theirs. I learned how important transitions are in the classroom, how in Kids come in from recess, they need something to do right away. We had a lot of fun interacting with different ages because then I felt a lot more prepared to be able to teach when I got back at any age. I thought it helped me with my TESOL minor where um, I'm trying to do the teaching English as a second language minor and it helped me kind of figure out how to incorporate and help those that have English as their second language into the classroom better than it probably would here because at the school that I was at, there, there were 27 different languages spoken. And I also think that the practicum that I was in, we were in one of the bottom decile schools for teaching. And just seeing those different experiences of what children go through, if they don't have the support that they have at home and they need the extra help, how much of a difference you can make as a teacher. And another experience, um, a little boy, the, he had major behavioral issues <laughs> and it was just a struggle in the classroom. I had such a hard time trying to reach him and help him do his work. But um, he found out, I found out that if you ignore the behavior, then he'll change and do the behavior you want him to. I could tell he wanted my attention so he would act out. 
So I would ignore it, and so then he'd be like, Miss Sunson, look what I'm doing. I'm doing my work. And I'm like, great, you know, like, and acknowledge it that way. At the end of the time there, I was just like, oh my gosh, he probably hates me. I told him to do so many things, to sit down and listen and do those things. And at the last day of class, he comes up to me with a note and says, Miss Sunson, I'm going to miss you so much. And like, just knowing that being an example for them and being for them, being there for them as a teacher, then it helps a long way. Anytime you weren't at school, um, which was, I felt like almost most of the time, you'd get to just travel around, um, probably about 70% with the group and 30% on your own. We were in the schools Monday through Thursday, every week until the end of March. And Friday and Saturday and Sunday were our travel days. Yes, I would. I would recommend it to anyone and everyone. I definitely recommend it. In those three months, I've done more than I've done in my entire life. Even if you're not sure, even if you think my things work out with a boy or a girl, just go. I learned so much that last semester than probably this whole time at BYU. It seems expensive, but it honestly, like after working all summer and paying for it, I'd never trade how much money it cost. It, it was so worth it.